hello and welcome into the Fantasy Football Show for Owen TV's Fantasy Football League. I'm Joey Tysick, Joe Johnson as always, and this week we've brought on Sammy Taramina, owner of the Green Buckeye. The juggernaut. The juggernaut, the yes. Yes, I'd like to spend special shout outs to the good folks at Oakview Middle School, the good folks at Scripps Middle School, Class of 06, Lake Orion Class of 06. Especially the team I um, devoted my team to, uh, the Green Buckeye, of course, is dedicated to my friend, Chrissy Henney. Nice. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sammy, you're having a solid season. You're 2 and 1. And uh, spoiler alert, you scored the most points this week. How does it feel? Where are you feeling right now with your team? Not surprised because I've been telling everybody I've been one of the most. Um, when I drafted that night, you know what I mean? And I know I've made a lot of moves on my team. I knew I was going to be a force to be reckoned with. You know what I mean? When I look at my team. Yeah. So you know, uh, scores were a little high across the board this week. And I got to say, it took three weeks, but I feel like the NFL is hitting its stride. The yeah. first two weeks were a little weird. You know, we lost a lot of players and a lot of players underperformed. And man, was there scoring in week three. I, I could yeah. not be happier. Yeah, it felt like scoring. across the board, a lot of teams were up into the 150-point totals in a lot of fantasy leagues. Obviously, the Dolphins <laughs> helped out a lot in that. But there was guys all <laughs> around the league that were putting up big, big numbers. Um, we'll see some of those as we get into the, uh, the recaps, which, uh, by the way, Sammy led the league this week in uh, points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know... <sighs> When I look at this matchup here, I was actually trailing heading into Monday night. Um, I was down to Malik 117-113, and then I just exploded, of course. But what what, he, what you got to learn is when you have a hookup, you got to use it to your advantage. And I do have a hookup with Jalen Hurts and um, A.J. Brown. Um, yeah. You know, and then as me, Dallas Goddard's really been disappointing me a little bit. So, mm-hmm. But thankfully, I got a tight end, and um, I got a tight end, and um. You know, but uh, another tight end that I could I could use if I have to drop Goddard, but he hasn't had the greatest of years. But you know, but honestly, when you have the hookup, it is very instrumental to have. Yeah. I, I love that strategy. I love the hookup. I think they call it the stack now. Um, but yeah, when your quarterback connects with your wide receiver, I mean that feels like double points, and uh, it's a strategy that I like to use every year on draft day. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for Malik's team, he finally kind of put it together this week. He put up 143, um, finally got something out of Mike Williams, but unfortunately now Mike Williams is out for the season, torn ACL Mm. and, uh, Jamar Chase finally got going for Malik, but, uh, CD lamb did not. So Malik needed everybody on his team, uh, to go off, to be able to beat Sam this week, but, uh, just didn't happen. And again, I keep saying it, even though Malik's team is the last place team, it's a, it's a scary lineup to go ag- go up against every week, and uh, it's one to watch out for. I feel like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy to name your team the last place team, yeah. and you put up 40, 143 points and you still lose. Yeah. It, you're manifesting this. I mean, look at that roster. And yeah. I got to say, it, it was nice to see Chase have his bounce-back game. You know, I because he was on Monday night, we were able to sit there and watch him play, and he looked like the old uh, Jamar Chase. So, yeah, nice to see him come back. He was uh, Malik's stud of the week. Um, but, yeah, you know, when, when you call yourself the last place team, it's going to be hard to get <laughs> wins in this league. Yeah, for and sure. It, and it's really hard to get wins in this league, obviously, when you look at the competition in this league. I mean, <laughs> obviously, you know, I've been really impressed with um, with Mr. Allen at wide receiver. Um you said last week to me, Joe, about how I was going to replace Saquon Barkley. The stats prove it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, replacing him? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, you Zach weren't Moss. hindered by that loss at all. And, uh, yeah, so Moss came in, scored 22.50. But uh, clearly, Allen handed you your win on a, a silver platter. I think he was the highest scoring. Yeah, he or was. Not counting high A-Chain, who uh, was uh, – you know, he's on our waiver wire, a chain, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, yeah uh, Allen led the, the fantasy football in week three. So uh, he, he handed you a win. It must be nice. It's kind of funny because Jacksonville's defense got minus one on there, which really bothered me considering 
Houston had T.J. Stroud, a rookie quarterback, and yep. yet, and yet he, and yet he goes off. He went on a tear against Jacksonville's defense. I mean, like I'm going, like come on, you know. So now I'm done with Jacksonville. They're out. So I'm just going back and just going back to my original defense, which is Philly. Yeah, Houston was, you know, in the conversation as being one of the worst teams in the league. But, man, they looked actually pretty impressive uh, against yeah. that Jacksonville defense. Yeah, they're always a defense that kind of sneaks up on a lot of teams, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the next matchup. We have the Dak Knight Rises taking down the halftime Honeybees in a thriller that came down to Monday night uh, where Becky almost made a crazy comeback. Yeah, she had the uh, Cincinnati kicker, McPherson, who uh, – doesn't quite get the bonuses that we get in the other league, but he yeah. still managed to put up 19 points as a kicker yep. and uh, brought brought the honeybees within inches of a uh, shocking last second yeah. victory, but mm -hmm. fell just short. Um, Mixon uh, kind of got it going uh, for 14 points. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Hill, you know, he got in on the fun. And uh, Tua. Tua, of course, I mean... I'm actually surprised that uh, she got the loss because a lot of her players showed up. Evans looked absolutely fantastic on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, he looked like the Evans of old. So she she put up points, but uh, but yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Marie on the Dak Knight Rises. Uh, Kirk Cousins has just been like the most steady fantasy quarterback this entire year, even though, you know, it, from a football perspective, it doesn't look as clean. Um, but fantasy numbers wise, he's playing really good. It's weird, you know. I've, I've been seeing a lot of posts and stuff that uh, Vikings fans want to see him out. They want to see him go. They want to see him traded. And yeah, yeah. I mean, he he put up an awful interception at the end of the game to lose it. You know, he's had some turnover problems, but he's putting up numbers. And yeah. and and yeah, as a fantasy football owner, that's what you want to see. But apparently, his fans want him out. But I'm like, is is he the problem he's no, I don't I think don't. he's the problem there I mean obviously they just traded for Cam Akers over there in Minnesota um but when you look at Cousins's production you know you got to have a, a steady quarterback and I think Kirk Cousins has really been that mm -hmm. um I, I would say between him and Jared Goff I think are probably the most consistent when you look at pr production you know you're going to get what you get with them yeah. but you know I mean like just efficiency honestly they're not going to throw picks they're not going to throw like you know, t I mean, like, but honestly, when you look at it from a perspective like that, you know, that's how I'm looking at it. When you have, yeah. when you have a pocket quarterback and Cousins a pocket quarterback, so it's your golf. I mean, you're, you're going to get what you're going to get. Yeah. And, and the Vikings have Cousins. They have Jefferson. They have Addison. They have a uh, tight end, former Lion Hawkinson. Um, I don't think that's what fans should be looking at. The Maybe defense is well, the, the one you got to look at with I, Minnesota. I, their, their biggest problem right now they're 0 3. Yeah. Teams that have started 0 and 3 on a season are 1 in 99 mm. in history to make the playoffs. Um, so that's what they're looking at right now. Kirk Cousins is on the last year of their deal, so I think they're in the same situation that the Lions were a couple of years ago with Stafford, where people didn't really want to pay him. Um, so if Minnesota falls off the the map, Kirk Cousins could be on the move. I think Washington would be interested for quarterback. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, the Jets are also looking, of course. Of course. But um, back to the Dak Knight Rises. Her MVP, funny enough, the Buffalo defense. Oh yeah, I mean, goodness. when you think about it, you know, she won by six points. And when you scroll down to that Buffalo defense, yeah. 32 <laughs> points from her defense. Yep. We'd, we'd be having a different outcome right now. Uh, Buffalo definitely is the stud yep. of the uh, this particular we, matchup. That's what... I gotta think what Becky is probably gotta be sick to her stomach. She and that <laughs> stat. I mean, like my goodness. I mean, like yeah. you look at, of course, what they did to Washington. My goodness. I mean, mm -hmm. like they were dominant, and to shut out Washington, that says a lot. They yeah. eventually scored a field goal, but uh, yeah, you're right. They they get that bonus point. Yeah, it's like we said in week one with uh, Tracy's Dallas defense. Defenses don't score that many points in fantasy, but when they do, it can be a a big difference maker. Is the uh, era of uh, Derrick Henry over? I'm looking at his two Oof. points. It could uh, be. Uh, here, and uh, I, I've had people offering me trades for Henry, and I'm like, no, I'm not interested. Uh, I'm thinking we're seeing the end of the Henry era. Uh, last year, 
you know, he was disappointing, even though later he had some bigger games. But uh, so far, he's stumbling out of the gates here. I, I think the hardest part is their offensive line is, is terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've had some of the toughest run defensives they've gone up against. They went up against New Orleans, who was notorious for having a good run defense. They went up against Cleveland, notorious for that as well. So I would think in the back half of the season, he has some easier matchups that maybe he can get things going. But, yeah, it's it's not looking good right now. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the stats, you know what I mean? Like, you know, who knows what happens when they get into um, the AFC South? Obviously, when you look at you're going against Indianapolis, you're going against Houston, you're going against um, Jacksonville. I mean, Mm -hmm. like, those are the – I know Jacksonville. I've kind of forgotten about Jacksonville now after what happened to me. (laughs) Um, But Houston, I don't – they're a young defense, especially up front. And then you look at Indianapolis, of course, they're they're a solid group defensively. Moving on to our next matchup, speaking of Tracy's team, the only undefeated team left in the league. Wow. The beginner, the worst graded draft, undefeated. An F, <laughs> an F by the AI people who uh, oh. graded our draft. Yeah. And, uh, boy, talk about karma or whatever you want to call it, but to 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 be told you had the worst draft in the league and yeah. you're the only remaining undefeated team that's pretty wild yeah and to be and sammy talking about being sick to your stomach i bet you ian witherspoon is sick to his stomach seeing Devonte adams put up 42 and raheem Mostert putting up 45 those two guys combined basically won the week for tracy yeah it did i mean like just imagine how ian's gotta be feeling losing this week and then of course in my um family league he's zero and three <laughs> um basically the worst team in our league there um but when you look at tracy's team you got to look at here. There's going to be times where, you know, will the magic keep going for Tracy? <laughs> and I really think she's going to have, I mean, like, wait till when things go hard. I mean, when she has to has players go on bye weeks and all that. You know, I think she could have a very difficult time when that happens. Um, but like I said, you know, she's on a high right now. But when she gets that first L, you know what I mean? Then we're going to see what. What that player she's made of. Yeah, I think the wild thing is she's she's battling injuries of all things too. Brandon Ayuk's been hurt. David Montgomery's been hurt. They both yeah. both may come back. And now she's got kind of a tight end problem where Sam Laporta is outplaying TJ Hawkinson right now. Yeah, and but this brings up the you know, bye weeks are gonna be starting in two weeks. And when her tight end has a bye week, she's got a stud tight end to replace him. I yeah. wish I had those kind of problems. So, uh, yeah, she's covered in tight end. The only problem that that incurs is that because they're both very good tight ends, you get nervous playing one and leaving the other possibly on your bench. Yeah. Um, On the other side, uh, Ian, I feel a little bit bad for. He's still battling the Eckler injury. He also has Deontay Johnson on IR. Also, Aaron Jones is out. So he's battling the most injuries probably out of anybody, of at least significant injuries. So – I expect him to bounce back at some point. Uh, that is debatable. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at his bench. Like, could he have gotten any help from players on his bench? And it is sad looking. Uh, yeah. Lots of injuries, <laughs> and uh, th- nobody on his bench would have made a difference. Uh, Kirk is on his bench. I don't know if you would start Kirk over any of his, his other wide receivers, but yeah, uh, he doesn't have a whole lot How of depth right now. How's his flex situation? It's Brandon Cooks, oh, which oh, I would man. take him out. Yeah. 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 So, All right. So, um, yeah. On yeah. to the next one. We got uh, my brother's team, his splendid team, taking down Drake's Wasteland Wanderers, who are uh, still struggling um, mightily. This is the other side of the beginner spectrum. We have Tracy that's 3-0, <laughs> Drake that's 0-3. So these are the two sides that you get. Um, my brother's team putting up 125. Ken Walker being really good for him. Uh, he still has a quarterback problem. I thought he was going to try to to figure it out, but looks like he was just rolling with Carr, who ended up getting hurt oh, actually yeah. in that game. Uh, so that made it even worse. Things are going from bad to worse on that squad. Yeah. Uh, it also looks like Drake just did not set his lineup this week uh, <laughs> as he played Jamal uh, Williams. On IR, there should be some sort of fine or penalty for that. <laughs> there needs yeah. to be. I mean, like, now, Jordan was the one who gave me my only loss this year. Yeah. And I, I, I still I still am stewing about that because I, I lost that one on a Monday night. Mm-hmm. But 
when you look at Jordan's team, I mean, he can be very sneaky, but he can also have his moments of, you know, he can be good at one yeah. point, and then he can be really bad at one point. Yeah. I mean, and he had he had to sit Waddle this week, too. So yeah. he's got Jalen Waddle on his bench. I'm so, going uh, uh, to chastise Drake here. You know, he proudly drafted Stroud. He said he liked the guy. He yeah. knows college ball. And Stroud has been sitting on his bench for mm-hmm. three weeks. He Not that he put up huge numbers, but he doubled field score. Yeah. Drake, put up <laughs> or shut up, man. Yeah. If you're going to draft Stroud, start him. <laughs> Fields is not doing you any favors. Yeah. And He's don't thrown- start players on IR. <laughs> Justin Fields is throwing a couple pick six. He was not good a couple weeks ago. And he had another struggle. Now, albeit he's playing Kansas City, you know. So basically, if I'm if I'm Drake, I would either drop Justin Fields or bench him. I mean, like my yeah. goodness. I mean, like, and then why are you starting a player on IR, man? I mean, <laughs> go like, come on. You know what I mean? You know, you look at it here. At least, you know, if you want to do if you want to do your team, at least like at least just like go online and like put and then post it like uh, and then like do your team. At least, like, because I always check my team every single day. Oh, sure. <laughs> and I always, and I check, I do it for all three of my teams. So, basically, you know, to see that, to see that, you know, it's really unfortunate. It's not fair to whoever you're playing as you expect to have a great competition. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, in a league that I used to be in, we actually did issue fines. If you started someone on IR or who was, you know, declared out or whatever, if you started them and clearly wasn't paying attention to your roster, you got fine. That went into the kitty that helped pay for food and stuff at the uh, banquet, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, come on. Uh, you don't, you don't want to give anyone an easy win in this league because it's, it's unfair to the other players. If someone's getting easy wins, that might be the difference between making the playoffs and not making the playoffs. So mm-hmm. uh, we need everybody to make an effort and start a full roster. Yeah, yep. I'll have to talk to Drake. I know he's had a busy uh, past week, so I'll try to get on him. I know that's another beginner thing he's not used to doing. All right, last ma- last matchup of the week, the game of the least, Joe and I. <laughs> that uh, was It was an eventful weekend of fantasy football for us. Came down to Monday night. It was exciting as a fantasy matchup because of how close it was. It was a boring matchup of how bad the Monday night game was yeah. between the Bengals and the Rams. Now, the projection, I knew it was going to be a close game. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty close the whole weekend. Yeah. Um, And that made it a lot of fun. And even though we didn't put up a ton of points, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm the team with the win with the least amount of points in that win. Um, It was fun. And... I I seriously thought I was going to lose on Monday night because I had Kyron Williams going on Monday and I had like a 20 point lead. You had three players yet to suit up on Monday night. You yeah. definitely had the advantage and I was working. So I got home a little later and was stunned to see what, what the Rams look like, what Stafford looked like. Uh, there was very little scoring on Monday night between the two games that were on. Yeah. So I expected a rough game out of Rashad White going up against the Eagles. So I wasn't, I wasn't too keen on that going well, and it didn't go well. But uh, Stafford and Nakua, they were a big disappointment. Nakua obviously had a big week one and two. Stafford, I could have won off if he didn't throw picks. I could have won if Nakua got in the end zone at the end there. So it was disheartening, that's for sure. You know, it's funny. When you when you look at the the rosters and the, the scores from this past week, it doesn't tell the story. And there's so much drama that's hidden in here. When it came down to the end of that Rams game, Joey was starting Stafford and Nakua. And he needed them to hook up for a touchdown to beat me. Had they connected... He would have beaten me. Stafford drops back, throws a pass to Nakua. He catches it and is tackled like on the two yard line. Yeah. That's the difference between winning and losing this matchup. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. It was, it was hold your breath. I was texting Joe and I literally said, the only, because, because the time was so low, I said, the only chance I have is if Stafford throws a touchdown to Nakua right now, because otherwise, if they get too close, it's not going to be enough yardage. 
to make up the points. And it was the perfect spot. <laughs> Stafford underthrew him just a little bit or overthrew him. I can't remember. Nakua had to kind of stutter step. He wasn't a clean catch. Yeah. Stumbled, fell, got tackled, and my fantasy game was over. I had the same situation happen to me in another league, of course, my mm-hmm. um arch rival and I took on each other and it was I was trailing one twenty two and eight. Um then AJ Brown went nuts and he actually saved me. So I actually won and Kyron Williams who only had six points in my other league mm. ended up winning that one one thirty to one twenty nine. Mm. Um mm. so that was a really tight game there. Um so Joe and Joey, I know how <laughs> tight you guys have <laughs> yeah. been. You've had, I mean it's it's a rivalry, obviously. I know you I know you two are in another league as well, like me and Ian are in two different leagues. I mean yep. like but um you know when you look at those rivalries, you know what I mean? It it te- it makes it makes or breaks you. You know what I mean? Especially if yep. you have to meet each other, <laughs> probably again again in the regular season, but also in the playoffs as well. Right. You know I'll be I'll be hoping for uh, revenge in our other league. That's right. Um, you know, there's a fun feature in Yahoo where you can watch the live updates in your matchup, and every time any of your players gets a yard or a reception, it'll say plus one point, plus point four points or whatever. And it's kind of fun watching that because I had Kyron Williams going. You had Stafford and Nakua. And, like, Kyron would get a carry and I would get, like, a point. And then you would get a reception and you get a point. And it was fun watching us battle back and forth. Mm-hmm. It's that That's what fantasy football is all about. That's why it's so fun to play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping uh, to get Anthony Richardson back this week because Joe Burrow just doesn't look like himself and I can't start him until he looks healthy. Um and I only have one more week before hopefully Cooper Cup and that Jonathan Taylor guy come back. And yeah, uh, I hope Jonathan Taylor doesn't come back. If those if those two things happen, you better watch out. I'm on I'm on a revenge tour. Uh-huh. What do you what do you think's more likely to happen? Taylor coming back to the Colts or getting traded to another team? I see Jonathan Taylor getting traded. I mean, honestly, when you really look at it here, I mean he's in the last year of his deal. Um I, I just think that if there's a team out there that needs running back help, obviously. I think I think they should give Indy a call, but I don't know why Indy's often a high rate, a, a high rate, a high price for him. I mean, obviously, you know, with running backs nowadays, you know, it is what it is. It's hard to say because they're now two and one in an easy division. They have the Rams this week, Tennessee the next, Jacksonville the following. Like their schedule is fairly easy, so you can like use both sides of the coin. You can say they should play, they should bring back Jonathan Taylor because then they could be a playoff team and they could maybe be dangerous. But you could also say, well, we're doing it without Jonathan Taylor, and we don't need him. Well, yeah, the Rams could say the same thing. I mean, even though they, they looked horrible on Monday night, but look at the, look at what they've developed with Stafford and Nakua and Tutu and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Van Jefferson, is yeah. it? And so they have a really great receiving core that Stafford's developing a rapport with, and Cup will be back at some point. So, you know, they can't continue playing like they did on Monday night. And and with Kyron Williams, you know, getting the, the full load at running back, you know, the team should be a contender. Yeah. Have to wait and see, but unfortunately we were low scoring teams this week. So <laughs> it doesn't mind being a low scoring team, but getting that W matters. That's right. All right. Moving on to the waiver wire this week. It's a mostly boring waiver wire. But ah, there's a couple high end guys. It's very changed, top heavy. That changed one of them. That I still regret that getting rid of him. I mean, like I've got to. So him you back. drafted him, but you just cut him to make room. No, I actually picked him up, but then I had to cut him just to make. Oh, room. so you didn't draft him, but you picked him up and then dropped him. Yeah, okay. I had to drop him. Yes. I mean, yeah, like he's just... he's been in a weird spot. He looked really good in the preseason for the Dolphins, but it's a it's a crowded backfield. Then he gets hurt early on. That's why I stayed away from him on draft season. I was looking to draft him in some leagues, uh, but it scared me off with the injury. Well, also, he... more third, uh, obviously, Rasheem more third. I mean, obviously. I mean, I talked to um, Nick Garcia, the assistant principal of Oakland Middle School, about this, and he told me, damn, you better go get him back. I mean, like, because he's going to be gone real quick. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Mostert, he's, what, 31? Yep. And so even though he's playing well, it's a long season, and A-Chain is going to get his – carries he's going to have his opportunity and they said he he blew people away at the combine he has this incredible uh you know dash time and everything so yeah. he ran he, track in college yeah he did. so this guy is going to get his opportunities yeah so, it'll, it'll, it'll yeah. be super interesting he didn't play in week one he got one carry in week two and then last week 
18 carries for 203 yards, two touchdowns, four catches, and also two more touchdowns. Yeah. Um, he's going to be definitely the top guy probably, but I feel like he's going to be somebody that he's going to blow up some weeks and he might have duds the next week. So, yeah. I mean, you don't know what you're going to get with him. I mean, obviously right. if he, cause obviously you look at with Mozart and then like, you don't know if he has a big game and then also with two, if he has to throw the ball a lot to the cheetah, especially Jeff I mean, Wilson's coming back. Jeff eventually. Wilson's coming back too. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, like it, it'd be interesting if, I mean, if you want to go after yeah. Ed Shane, but. Definitely, you know, we'll definitely don't we leave him on the waiver wire. I'll no. say that. Yeah, and I, I, I'm making that regret right now. But well, here's, uh, here's the interesting thing about the Dolphins and their running backs. The Dolphins have demonstrated that they're capable of putting up points on the board, which means they're going to have leads often, which means they're going to want to kill the clock and run the ball. So uh, Mostert and A-Chain are going to get carries late in the game because – the Dolphins can put points up at will with Hill and Tua and stuff. So and just put 70 up on Denver. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, fluke. If you're looking for a wide receiver, we got Adam Thielen coming back from his grave, basically. 33 wow, year old Adam Thielen uh, looks way better with uh, Andy Dalton at the helm. Mm. Andy Dalton's supposed to maybe get one more start um, this week before maybe Bryce Young comes back. Maybe he doesn't. Um, and uh, so he's a, he's a good safe option for this week against Minnesota. Really good matchup. Interesting matchup, too, former team. Yeah. Uh, the long-term solution, I would say, would be Tank Dell. He's played really good for Houston. They're going up against Pittsburgh this week. And C.J. Stroud was the reason that Houston drafted Tank Dell. So there's a connection there. They found each other the last couple of weeks in the end zone. So uh, those two are really good options, um, I would say. Anybody have any other waiver ideas he's on my team right now but jordan atwell from the rams is another one i'm curious to see because a lot of people was going after patrick nekla um you know i think he's been he's been mr reliable the last few weeks um you're talking about tutu yeah tutu yeah okay yeah, yeah that's what i'm talking about i think he's gonna be if he's on your waiver wire go get him yeah he uh it looked like on monday night you know how stafford used to kind of look like he was forcing the ball to cup that's what it looked like on Monday night with Tutu. He was just kept dumping the ball at well, at well, at well. Even if he was yeah. covered, he was throwing the ball at him. So I think they started getting desperate. He's kind of their deep threat. Yeah. I think that's part of why it seems like they totally have disregarded Van Jefferson and the deep, the deep ball. And Tutu is yeah. kind of the next guy up. They've done that for years with Van Jefferson, though. They yeah, they've done that for years. Yeah, so I think Tutu is kind of the next guy up for them. You know who I I never thought I'd be doing this with, but. I'm starting to look at kickers. Kickers <laughs> have been made, have been d- d- uh, game deciders, and like yeah, there have been kickers who putting up a lot of kicks. Now we don't get huge bonuses in this league for long kicks, but kickers are putting up major, major points. And if you have a kicker mm-hmm. who's giving you, you know, three, four, five points a week, you need to start looking at some of the other kickers on the waiver yeah. wire. Gay this past weekend, uh, he's with what the Colts. Yeah. Had a major, major game. Uh, the Rams kicker had a monster game. So if you're Jake lo- Elliott is on the waiver wire, he's like the number one kicker, I think. Still, I yeah. might go get him. Who knows? But I do have a good kicker with Miami's kicker, though. Yeah. yeah. So if you're lo- you know, if you're losing by four or five points in your matchup, maybe the kicker is yeah. the difference I, maker. I always say a good rule of thumb when you're looking at kickers is look at that last stat. There's a forty to forty nine yard field goals. Those give you four points in Yahoo default. And then the 50-plus, those give you five points. Now, you don't think that a one- or two-point difference on a field goal makes a difference. But like you're saying, it can decide games. So exactly. I always look at the guys that can really kick it from deep and give you those extra points. Yeah, They do. They do. All righty. Moving on to week four. Mm. We're already at week four. Seems like the season is starting to fly by. Well, I have um, I have a bye week this week. Because I'm playing Drake. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you better gonna, make it. Is that going to come back to haunt me? Uh, we'll see. I'll make sure that Drake <laughs> sets his lineup this week. That's for sure. Yes. Yes, I mean. Because you are projected 115 and 94 right now. That'll and change. And that's a huge gap. But yeah. Drake That'll does change. have a, a big zero on his <laughs> yeah, projected that, that's score. That's got to change. So we'll see that. Um, that should be an interesting one. 
I'm playing Malik's last place team this week, so that'll be a podcast feud uh, that I'll have to <laughs> talk the about tomorrow. Line preview. Yeah, I'm uh, projected to win 122 to 116, but again, we saw I've been projected pretty high scoring, and I have not <laughs> met expectations. Mm-hmm. The undefeated Tracy's top notch team going up against my brother's team, who no. who once before knocked off Sammy, as he's mentioned <laughs> I try before. Not to think about it. Maybe he's the dark horse. To take Here's her out. Jordan the giant killer. We'll see. We'll have to find out. Uh Tracy has a lot of uh Lions in right now with Laporta and Goff. We'll see. They're going against Green Bay. Yeah, we'll see what she decides to do. On Thursday night, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. The early slate. Um then we got Sammy's taking on my wife. The Dak Knight rises is a battle for uh the next top spot, basically. Basically for Second or third place. I can just imagine how high scoring that's going to be. Because I know when I look at her team, I mean, like, she's got a good team. I mean, like, really, yeah, she's tough. I mean, like, she's going to be tough. I mean, like, so I'm trying to figure out, okay, is Saquon coming back? Is the Saquon's coming back? Then I'll tell you what, I got my full team back. Yeah. Um, but then obviously, you know, if he doesn't come back, I have, I have, I, I have like backups. You know what I mean? I have alternatives. So, yeah. you know, when I look at that matchup against, um, again, I mean, in that matchup, it's going to be a good one. I mean, it'll be. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. It could be like maybe like, I would probably say like one sixty, one fifty five type wow. game. I think that'll be that. She's got definitely very low projections, which is interesting. I know Buffalo is not going to put up thirty two against Miami's offense, most likely. Yeah. Um, but she does have Kamara coming back this week, which could be Ooh. really interesting. Um, so she'll have to make a, a running back decision there. But um, she's been outperforming expectations. I consider myself lucky that I got her in week one when uh, Kelsey was not in the lineup yeah. yet. Uh, so she has Kel- Kelsey, who has scored, I think, the last two weeks in a row. Yep. And he's showing off for his new girlfriend. So yeah. he has something to prove. Uh, so I'm lucky I, I got her in week one because uh, I think her team's pretty formidable. So uh, this is going to be, this could, I don't know, what's the game of the week? Tracy versus Jordan or Buckeyes versus? Or me versus? It's, uh, I might have my vote for game of the week. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, and then finally, we got Ian's team taking on the halftime honeybees. Again, Ian's team, it all depends on what players come back this week. Will Eckler come back? Will Aaron Jones come back? It, wait to be seen. Practice reports will start becoming more clear tomorrow. Honeybees um, right now is heavily favored. Yeah. And uh, that's mostly because Josh Kelly just has not been getting it done, and he has a, a really low projection still right now. And New England's defense playing up against Dallas, that's a that's a tough matchup. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really but uh, matchup. the NFL game of the week might be that Miami Buffalo game. So if that's another oh, high yeah. scoring affair, Tua and Tyreek Hill, that's that that duo that Becky's that's, basically been riding the the season. So that should be a fun one. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Anybody have any uh anything else before we go? What, um, when you look at the matchups, you know what I mean. Like you know, I'm looking forward to the matchup with um. Looking forward to my matchup coming up. I mean, like, I expect it to be a war. I'm keeping a really close eye on Saquon um, when he comes back. I'm hoping he comes back this week. If not, you know, I got to have my contingency plan ready to go. Yeah, the NFL needs its stars, and uh, I'm just happy that scoring seems to be back in week three. I hope this trend continues. Uh, nobody wants to see a three to six final. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad scoring is back, and uh, it's going to make fantasy fun. Yeah, I'm excited for this week. Everybody remember to put in your waivers. And, uh, good, le- good luck in week four. Sammy, thanks for joining us. Thank you real much. And uh, we'll be back for week five. All right. Good luck, guys. God bless all.